Greetings, Joseph Kursky here with you. In this video, let's add additional data, such as watersheds and hydrography and weather to understand context in which we teach about water. Now, recall from prior videos and tutorials that we collected data in the field, in this case on storm drains with Survey 123, ArcGIS Survey 123 from ESRI. Educators and students can go out in the field and collect not just storm drains, but tree species, litter, dangerous intersections, historical homes, and much more in the field with these powerful tools. So I have a map that I created and I demonstrated in a prior video of how to create that map from the survey data. So I've got a simple map with a base map and the results of my survey. But you can do so much more because this is all connected to the ArcGIS platform. One of the things you can do, of course, is to change the base map. Let's say you're collecting data in an extreme local area, your school campus, your university, your community, your technical or tribal college campus, your neighborhood, some park or natural resource reserve, etc., and you want to have a detailed base map. You can use a satellite image. There are hundreds of maps that you can use in this way, not just the 20 or so in the base map gallery, but there are others you, you can use as well, images as well as vector data. So these are just a few of the data collection points that you see there. You can see the curved nature of that street and from the photograph and also from the satellite image. I'm going to change it back to topographic now. So recognize that you can change the base map, but even more powerful is to add additional layers to your web map that give something context, give your study some context. In this case, my study is focused on water, so it makes sense that I'm going to look for water-related context here and water-related layers. I've got two main galleries, certainly not the only gallery, but ArcGIS Online, and a subset of that called the Living Atlas of the World, the Living Atlas of the World, which is a 8,500 layer subset of ArcGIS Online. You may say, hey, Joseph, well, if it's 85 is a, 100 is a subset, what is ArcGIS Online? Well, it's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of layers of varying quality. So again, see my videos on how to assess data quality. I can look for eco regions, I can look for watersheds, hydrography, and much more soils, population density, and again, the sky's the limit here. Stream gauges. So how did I add these things? I'm just going to adding data from the ArcGIS online map viewer, and I'm showing you how I did this. So now I'm going to go and show you the results. The results of the exercise after I added the map layers are as follows. So now I've got a whole bunch of layers. Remember, no, more is not always better. Just because you can doesn't mean you should add hundreds of layers. You want to keep it focused. In this case, I want students to look at the relationship between storm drains, rivers, watersheds, current weather, stream gauge stations giving the stream height at any particular time, it's real-time data coming in from the Internet of Things, in this case, stream gauges that are tied to latitude, longitude, and streaming their data into ArcGIS Online. Really amazing capabilities that you have at your fingertips here, folks. So I'm going to turn on a few of those layers here. The watersheds that I've got right here, this, this particular study focused on Buffalo and some other areas as well. So it makes sense to have the students look at some things across the border in Canada. Oftentimes we have data that ends at national boundaries, but increasingly you've got data for multiple countries inside this same platform. That makes it a lot more intuitive and also makes a lot more sense, right? Watersheds and river systems do not stop at national borders. This is one of the examples of a stream gauge and the flood factor risk scores for counties. So again, I'm just showing you a couple of layers that you could add, the layers that I added to my map that are focused on, again, having students understand water and hydrography. It's so important to our 21st century world, not just droughts, but floods, water quality, water conditions. Where do we get our water? How is it 
sent around in terms of uh, human constructed canals and aqueducts and piping and so on and so forth how is the water treated what about storm drains do we just dump anything down as a, a drain or a storm drain no we want to we want to encourage students to to be water stewards in their communities and, and really be advocates for clean and uh, plentiful water and it all is, of course, tied to population change as well, climate, uh, changing weather patterns, and so on. So again, these these data sets at your fingertips, I'm showing the stream gauges right now is at the time I'm actually making this video in the sort of the late summer 2021. And I'm looking at, looks like there was some sort of rain event maybe a few days ago because you've got some... Uh, spikes in some of these hydro hydrographs so getting students to understand this is a nice integration of science math geography spatial thinking and using of course geographic information systems all right at your fingertips and i'm using the arcgis online map viewer in this case i'm using the new map viewer that rolled out in mid 2021 look at that uh, real-time cloud pattern up in michigan for example so if i clicked on some stream gauges up there i'd probably see uh, some spikes there too right getting the students to think about okay if it rains for 24 or 48 or something like that hours what's going to happen to the stream gauge and why does it matter what's downstream from there etc so i've got uh, several different again pointed layers inside my arcgis online viewer and you can pan around the country the s3 hydro layer is one of my favorites because at this small scale you can see just the amazon the yangtze the nile the mississippi the missouri and the usa and as you zoom in you see sub tributaries and tributaries but you also see this dotted brown line which are the watershed boundaries so getting students to understand why watersheds are there where they are physical boundaries physical geography etc landforms and then why do they matter why does it matter if, uh, if if i'm living in a certain area and all of the rivers drain within a few hundred meters of my school campus why why do i care about such things so getting students to understand where things drain to and understanding river systems is really important to many areas of physical geography environmental studies cultural geography as well uh, biology hydrography etc so Within a few moments, I can add some very powerful layers to my map and give it some context. And remember, this is just for water, but if you had a, another study on another topic, you could add the pertinent layers to that map too. Thanks.